I watch a lot of home renovation shows on TV, and the numbers they throw around for things like bathrooms sort of blows my mind. So I set out with access just to Google and YouTube and wanted to see how cheaply, yet with a high level of quality, I could build a basement bathroom. This is my story. So, while a shower existed in this basement, there was no roughed-in plumbing for a toilet or a sink. So, a quick Google would tell me that something like this would uh, incur considerable costs. So, I decided to refer back to YouTube and see just how complicated this would be. And I decided early on what could possibly go wrong, and I'm going to give it a crack. And should things fail horribly, I'll call in help to fix up my mess. To my surprise, things went uh, rather smoothly, and once I uh, got over the fear of smashing holes in the basement floor, uh, I realized there's just dirt under there, nothing scary, and uh, I did a whole lot of measuring and uh, calculation of angles that I, where I wanted the pipe to lay. Uh, there was plenty of slope because the, the main sewer was quite deep, actually. And as you'll see, uh, there was really no issue other than a little bit of sweat and some cuts on my hands from wielding that uh, the big eight pound sledge. I've just about got the pipe exposed here. I can get down and get right underneath it. Got about 16 inches. Just scooping out the last little bit. That should do it. The plan being to bring in a 45 into the main sewer heading that way and we'll see how that goes here we have the result of all my digging a simple 45 joining the toilet in the sink and a 45 run to the main sewer okay what have we got we have got a toilet flange a sink drain into a nice little 45 Another left turn, and we go down into the the main sewer pipe. Overall, uh, on the complexity scale, uh, not very. So after some trial and error. Uh, for the best way to uh, to put this on, I uh, I will be putting tile uh, directly onto this concrete slab, so I'm looking for any way to possibly reduce the risk of further cracking uh, in the future. I don't know if this is necessary, but for ten bucks, it was worth the uh, worth the uh, the extra ten minutes to slap it on with a paintbrush. The label says it might help, but you know they're selling it, so. In any case, I slopped a little around all the exposed concrete edges and with any luck at all, it'll, it'll just help prevent uh, the old concrete uh, from cracking where it meets the, uh, the new concrete going forward because, there, like I said, there's going to be tile directly on top of it. So I've just slapped it on there and we're just waiting for it to get tacky. And then I'll get dumpy with some concrete.
the ease of any job comes down to whether you have the right tools or not. I did not. My mortar, uh, tile mortar mixing paddle did not uh, do very much except cause my drill to uh, start smoking. Anyway, after much struggle, five, uh, five and a half bags of uh, quick creep. So while the fear factor of breaking the, uh, the floor up uh, was about a nine, uh, the complexity of actually completing it was about a four. And I was thrilled to move on to the next stage because in my head this was going to be the most difficult part of the whole operation. Well, we shall see. So I reached this point, the project, uh, assuming it was going to be the most enjoyable, um, and it was. However, there were a few uh, challenges to overcome for someone who doesn't do this, uh, well, ever. <laughs> the, uh, the wall was not square to the wall with the doorway. Uh, the shower was already bumped off the wall by about three inches by the guy who installed it. Uh, the ducting dropped down from an already uh, very low ceiling. Um, all these things I, I had to uh, consider while deciding the overall size of the bathroom and never having built a bathroom before. I don't, I don't know what standard bathrooms are for, for something with a toilet, a sink and a shower. So I ended up deciding on approximately six by eight. And as I was laying the lumber out, I, I kind of thought that was going to be small-ish, but it turns out it's uh, very spacious. Uh, I got away uh, the day before the, uh, the stores all locked down, and they're still locked down. Um, I went in and picked up all the two by fours that I would need um, just before the store sh shut down. And that, that was over a month and a half ago now. So I was, that was about $250 for all the lumber. And uh, that was enough to, uh, to complete the project right down to the final board, actually. So it was a good guess. The exterior walls where things got interesting. The existing shower had been bumped out a little bit already. So I had to continue bumping out the rest of the wall. As well as accommodate all the, uh, the plumbing and an existing pipe that came from the furnace. I decided due to its ease of use, I was going to use PEX for the majority and then uh, solder in a T into the, the hot and water lines. Hot and cold. Pep's pipe, Pex pipe is not uh, spliced in yet. However, what I've done is that will get tacked to the joists. I've run hot and cold down the wall, right turn. This this one's a bit of a this is a drain for something. I don't know. I had to bump the wall out to accommodate this because it's just this constant sloping down and away. It comes from the furnace, so who knows? Uh, a little tea in the cold water. Down to the toilet. Hot and cold continue. Down to the vanity.
Moment of truth. What could possibly go wrong? Let's crack that a little bit. I hear lots of water trickling into the pipes. It's a very worrying sound. But I think it's just the air escaping up and the water filling the pipes. No drips yet. No drips. Oh my goodness. Might this have actually worked? Another stage complete, even with dusty smoke effects. Three of the four lights in place. Putting up the drywall was a very rewarding step because for the first time it was really starting to come together as a room. It was uh, very straightforward uh, for the most part, except the ceiling, uh, which was quite low and I dropped down the width of a 2x4 to provide some uh, uh, a point for fastening it. And, and just the way that there were all these pipes up there, water pipes running the length of the basement, uh, I really, there was no way to to lay out the pieces to have uh, them land on a a 2x4 and be able to uh, screw the seams in together. So what I ended up doing was uh, the lights are installed between two 2x4s. The 2x4s are generally spaced 24 inches across the ceiling and uh, I just put some backing on the back side of the uh, the drywall seam and uh, screwed them together there so it would hold them together. Uh, it hasn't buckled, it hasn't, uh, it's not noticeable at all. You can't tell where the seams are or the fact that I had to do that, but it was just one of these, uh, one of these puzzles that I needed to solve because the, uh, the ceiling is just a mess. It's uh, low with a lot of wiring and uh, all those pipes to deal with.
My approach for the ceiling fan may have been a little bit backwards, but uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just uh, referring to YouTube and Google whenever I come up against something new. I uh, put in the I ran the exhaust uh, venting and power to the spot where I wanted uh, the fan to be, and I made sure it was right along the edge of a joist. And I put in some other uh, blocking to attach the fan to, just uh, just to make sure it'd be nice and secure. And then once the drywall was up, I measured back to that spot, cut my hole, stuck the fan up in, and mounted it, and it worked out beautifully. Well, nothing about the mudding was particularly difficult. Uh, the inside corners were something new to me, so that took a little bit longer. But uh, a light touch with a sanding sponge at the end seemed to do wonders to uh, making all the joints completely disappear. And uh, I'm completely happy with the way that turned out. Right, so finished painting the ceiling and immediately moved on to trying to figure out how to put tile around the shower base. YouTube delivered. Some guy with a tape measure, a pencil, and uh, a little scribing technique. And there's my very first cut ever with a grinder. Done.
And while I won't lie, I had to cut it twice. This, this doesn't actually go in here. Not too shabby. After cutting all the tiles around the shower base, uh, it was at this point that I proceeded with laying out the uh, heated flooring mat. Now adding heating flooring was a very late decision. I hadn't planned to install it, but uh, I did know that the basement floor was very cold. I did a lot of YouTubing, Googling and Amazoning and stumbled across the open box mat for $57. And I figured, well, for $57, I've got nothing to lose. So let's, uh, let's install it and see how it goes. I've never had a heated flooring in any of my homes before, so this was all new to me. Somewhere right now, someone is watching this, clenched fist in the air, shaking it, screaming self-leveling cement. Well, I checked with the manufacturer on the website, and this is also legit, so there's that. At this point, I felt like I was closing in on the end. I was, but I wasn't. There were still a lot of little things, and they just kept me busy for quite a while. I had the doors, the door trim, the painting of the doors, the vanity, all the plumbing connections, I hang the mirror, the towel bar, the thermostat for the heated flooring. Uh, all these things took time.
Okay, so the end is in sight. Just some uh, final plumbing to figure out. I am not a plumber. I have never done this before. I have YouTubed it. Let us see how this goes. Well, I'm, I'm kind of without words because it is what it is. Um, it's kind of exactly as I had envisioned it ending up. Uh, I am 100% sure it's going to work, yet I am 100% sure that somebody's going to have a problem with the way that I did it. So, it is what it is. I'm happy though. <laughs>